Well, welcome back. This is the fourth of uh, four videos uh, looking at risk profiling. And actually, we're going to start the video with an uh, in-class exercise. So we've been, uh, over the last three videos, starting with core or key definitions associated with uh, um, uh, resource profiling. We discussed what a resource is, talked about the types of questions. So what I'd like you to do now is go actually to Appendix A of the book. Use that to uh, do a security risk profile and use either the Georgia State University or the University of Alabama at Birmingham and their associated learning management system as the mechanism for doing your security risk profile. And then come back and brief your class, or if you're just looking at this video online, do it yourself. Uh, brief yourself. Can you answer all of those types of questions based on the public information that's available on each of those learning management systems? I'm going to assume that you've already done that because what that does is it sets the context for some of the more meta or larger scale considerations you want to make when doing a risk profile. The first of which is if everything is high priority, then nothing is high priority. So as you're, you're sort, trying to sort out uh, the priority and the sensitivity of all of your systems, if everything's ranked high, there is an issue there. You're, you're, you're ranking it incorrectly. Um, Whatever your higher sensitivity resources are, you're going to go back and have to relook at those or evaluate those more frequently, more frequently than your lower sensitivity. And, and typically, the tiering system I use is either three or four tiers. Um, and uh, you can see an example of a three-tier system, low, moderate, and high, uh, on the slide to the right that comes from the book table 4.2. Um, but as you're looking um, at these, you want to make sure uh, that those things that are high, that are unacceptable to the organization with significant monetary productivity or reputational losses are being looked at more frequently than the moderate and the lows. As you're doing this, you're going to have to pay attention to those terms that we started this whole uh, video series with, risk, sensitivity, uh, severity, and likelihood. Here are some questions just in case uh, uh, you haven't looked at it uh, uh, in uh, Appendix A, but I know you did it. You went and did it in the first exercise. Um, the uh, As you're going and doing this, you have to make sure that there's common agreement across the organization on risk appetite. And let me talk about that for a little bit. So risk appetite is the amount of risk the organization is willing to take on. Some organizations are going to be very conservative. And uh, they're not going to want to take on uh, a lot of risk, which means they're going to have to make a lot of investments to uh, put in the appropriate controls and mitigate risk or, or transfer that risk to someone else. Other organizations are going to be able to, or, or willing to take on uh, a more significant amount of risk. And it may be just the environment they work on. It may be the corporate culture. It may be their mission, vision, value statements. But the, the, what the, the author, Wheeler, tries to point out is you need to sense the environment often. You need to be talking to the business owners. You need to be talking to the C-suite. You need to be talking to the CEO to make sure that there is alignment between the risk appetite that um, the CEO and the business unit uh, owners are willing to take on and what your risk management or information security office is trying to implement. As with all things involving technology, do not engage in techno babble. Um, there are lots of ways to not do this. First of all, don't use acronyms unless you define the acronyms. And what's better is don't use acronyms. Uh, use, use the real words and, and try to talk in terms of business value because everybody understands that. They understand uh, what the bottom line is for the corporation or for the institution. What they don't understand is the technology part, and you should be able to translate between the two. And then finally, this idea that break this into small chunks, solve those small chunks, rather than trying to get a grand slam, because the grand slam is just daunting. It's, it's too hard uh, for most folks. It's easier to do small incremental wins. A good example of this is disaster recovery. Can you just sit down and write a disaster recovery plan for your organization? Uh, sure you can. Uh, it's just really, really hard because there are lots of potential disasters that you have to plan for and each have nuanced responses. And what I found to be a better approach is to pick three disasters and do three disasters a year uh, in terms of trying to address those disasters. 
Um, and then over five years, you'll have 15 disasters pretty well planned out. And those will probably be the most important disasters. And that's something that is achievable. And maybe your, your next series of five years, you're not doing three, you're doing five and you can do, you, you increase your coverage, but you're going to get much more nuanced, much more detailed plans that way than trying to sit down and play for that grand slam. All right, uh, we talked about this earlier, I think it was lesson one, uh, not lesson one, but video one associated with this chapter four of Wheeler's most excellent book. And <clears throat> it's this idea that there is a relationship between risk sensitivity, risk tolerance, which is your kind of exposure range, and your risk threshold, which is the upper bound of that risk exposure range. So kind of working from uh, right or from left to right, risk sensitivity and risk threshold are inversely proportional. So if you have a low sensitivity, you know your threshold is going to be high. If it's moderate, it's moderate. If it's a high sensitivity, your threshold is going to be low. Now, looking at risk tolerance and risk threshold, risk threshold is going to be the upper bound, whatever the largest number or value is in your risk tolerance range. So in that uh, first entry, uh, you've got a tolerance range of negligible to high. What's the highest value there? Well, it's high, so your risk threshold has to be high. Um, if you look at the second one, it's negligible to moderate. The highest value there is moderate, so risk threshold has to be moderate. And if you look at the bottom one, it's negligible to low, thus your risk threshold has to be low. So there's a relationship between these three terms, and you want to make sure that you maintain those relationships as you go um, across. And that risk threshold is your, your kind of definition of risk appetite, okay? It, it, it's giving you how, what's that upper bound, how much am I willing to take within my organization associated with a particular resource. And this is going to change based on a particular resource. All right, well, we finished up Chapter 4 looking at um, resource profiling. What we're going to do now is take that and build on that to formulating risk. All right, so keep on studying, and I look forward to seeing you in the uh, next video as we, chap as we tackle Chapter 5 in Wheeler's Risk Management book.